Oh, uh, hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, Untitled Projects. Thanks for uh, viewing the video. Anyway, this is a quick one today. It's obviously the MB3 thing, as you can see on your screen, but it's about navigation. So it's great flying this plane, low, fast, hard, whatever you want to do. Uh, you know, it's a brilliant plane for low level stuff, Scotland, Iceland, Grand Canyon, all of that, done it all, brilliant. But the other day I thought, well, let's do it. Let's do a long distance. See what it's all about. But how to navigate. So you can obviously navigate with the conventional means. Press V and you'll get a map. It'll let you know. But I'm going to show you how to navigate manually using instrument flying, which actually I thought might be a bit, you know, time consuming, boring, but it's actually pretty good fun, weirdly. Uh, and you have to be very precise, obviously, so you can land on the runway. But I'm going to show you how to do that now. And I'm heading off to the Ciliars, just for, you know, a great day out. But it's, you know, it's, it's a relatively short flight. It's about 40, 45 nautical miles. And I, I thought it would be a pretty good way of showing how to use some of this manual navigation equipment without going, oh, that's where we are. So this is easy, right? This is easy, easy money. And you can see that I'm way off course at the moment. But uh, normally you'd use this. Uh, to find your heading and to land wherever you need to land. So this is where we're going to go. We're going to St. Mary's International. It's not international. It's tiny, only just big enough for this plane. But most importantly, it's over the sea and you're really screwed if you can't find your way. Can't find an airport, obviously, got a ditch. So I was flying from Iceland the other day. Let me just turn, let's just change our course so we don't go too far off. And um, ran out of fuel from Iceland to Scotland and um, yeah crazy so I thought let's do some proper planning so we can see where we're going to land over there that's that's a, that's a silly hours great place to go if you want to go on holiday uh, very very quiet not allowed cars only golf buggies so give it a shot plus you can get over there on a helicopter which is awesome from Penzance anyway so I'm just going to line up because I know roughly where I've got to go uh, but say you are in heavy cloud or flying during the night. In this thing, you cannot see anything during the night. You've got no GPS system. Uh, you've got nothing, nothing to work by. In any of the other aircraft, uh, you've got your nice big GPS screen. Not all of them, but you know the vast majority of them on Microsoft Flight Simulator. You've got your big GPS screen that's going to allow you to, to find your airport. But without further ado, let's get into it. So, first of all, We've got to get this baby going on. So we want radio nav. And the reason why we want radio nav is because that's going to give us a direction to a beacon. And that beacon is going to be at the airport. So that's going to give us a rough, rough direction for the beacon. It's not working at the moment because we haven't actually put the course in. But this is why it's so important to initially, when you're planning uh, to fly somewhere, you need to have a course. Otherwise, you don't know where you're going to go. Seems like a silly idea, but it does make sense. So you can find that up here uh, in your nav log. We've got to go 240 degrees. That's all you need to know. 32 nautical miles we've got left. So not long. I'm going to throttle it back. We're losing a bit of height. So we need to be on our nav, and that's giving us the direction straight away. So let's change this to 240. And the R nav is pointing directly at its closest beacon where it knows we're going to go. So we need to go to 238. Fine adjustments. 238. Let's just check that. Because we don't want to die. 248. There we go. I was going to die. 248. Use my mouse wheel for this because it's pretty fine. And you can set your heading if you're really into that go for it it's going to take you a while so make sure you trimmed your aircraft out you use you're losing the right amount of speed and height so let's go 248 again and this means you're really not going to screw it up so that beacon's slightly further off but that's because we're coming in at an angle so you want to keep it on our nav let's get that standby on so as we're cruising down uh, i thought it'd be a good time just to show you a couple of other bits so once you set your course and you have uh, a beacon set uh, through obviously pressing your R nav, uh, it's going to give you some distance. And 
a relative time limit based on how long it thinks it's going to take you to get there. So all really useful stuff. You know when to throttle back, you know uh, when to get your gear down, you know when to start uh, getting your levels of flaps. Another really useful thing that I've noticed is this little thing here. So this is your, your trim, which is very useful when you're doing some cruising. So you can see I'm trimming it left and right. And essentially, you just want it to line up like that. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to detrim itself uh, like all aircraft do. So always good thing to have a look at. Uh, and also your, uh, your up and downward trim here, which is really useful, connected to your angle attack. So when you want to cruise or you want to get on a glide slope, uh, all these variables you can change uh, so you're perfectly aligned like I am now. So I'm losing a nice bit of uh, altitude coming in. I've got 24k left uh, and uh, I'm down to about 8,000 feet. So that's looking pretty good. And we can see, I was trying to find that airport. We can see where we're going to land. So that's the end of our runway. And you can see our beacon here. Our RNAV is pointing at our beacon. We can turn that off and you can see it goes back. So this is our general heading and this is the beacon. So that makes a lot of sense. And uh, I will get back to you when we land. Right, so I'm flying across the runway now. And what I want to do is line these two babies up. And once I've got that, I know I'm going straight in the right direction. See, my course has changed again. So let's get that up to 48. Yeah, it's really, really easy to, uh, to, to de-course yourself. Uh, this is really useful as well, telling you miles. Uh, another thing which is very useful is obviously looking at your, your speedo is that little yellow mark there is telling you when you can put your gear down because this plane does not let you put the gear down until you go up below 150 knots, about 145 knots or so. So good to know. Okay, already we're turning on for finals now. So this should be the magic moment where that line starts to uh, starts to line up. So here we go. This is our course. And we can see the runway is just behind uh, the canopy there. So this should line us up. And hopefully, we're golden. Oh, I overshot it. There we go. <laughs> Rubbish. All right, yeah, so now we're lining up for finals. And you can see that that has allowed us to get pretty close. Now, this is going to help us land. And so is this. So this line here is going to show you exactly when you're on the central line of the runway and you can see I'm slightly off it now so that's a good thing to illustrate and when I come onto the runway it's going to line up real nice and then we know we're going straight down the center line and we're good to go so you can see we've drifted slightly to the right and there we go we're on target and now we've just got to follow that target in and hopefully not crash and blow up. But I'm not very good at landing, so we're going to have to see. Right, so we've got a massive side wind. And uh, yeah, it's getting pretty difficult right now. So I'm going to try and get this baby down. I've got uh, all of my flaps down at the moment. By the way, this takes a real age to slow down. So that's why you have a speed brake which has gone out, which you can see on the far left, just here. Our speed brake's all the way out. That's going to slow us right down. And then I'm going to take that speed brake off. We're now below 150, which means that we can put the gear down. And as I was looking at the instruments, I wasn't paying any, any attention at all to the, uh, to the runway. We'll make it, we'll make it. Right, coming in far too low, but you know, what are you going to do about it? Got the gear down. Sure do. And yeah, absolutely stonking side wind. And here we go. Here we go. And 
Wow, that was a side rid and a half. And I forgot to put anti-skid on, but, you know, all good. And that's how. That's how you use a navigation system. And it's pretty easy and kind of fun. So um, get on it and maybe fly to the silly hours or go on holiday there. Anyway, thanks for stopping by and thanks for clicking and all that kind of stuff. Always good to have people watching this stuff. Uh, and, you know, you could subscribe. Up to you. Anyway, thanks a lot. Bye. <laughs>